they're better for the environment and could save you money. That's why more and more electric vehicles are on the road. Last year, nearly three and a half million electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles were registered in the U.S. That's about six times more than in 2016. But when these vehicles catch fire, they burn hotter and longer thanks to the lithium-ion batteries that power them. As CBS 2's Usher Karisha discovered, some firefighters need more training to fight EV fires. The tactics that we're using for internal combustion engine vehicles don't really apply to the batteries on these electric vehicles. We're used to applying water and the vehicle going out relatively quickly, and that just isn't the case with these electric vehicles. All right, for this first part, guys, we do, you do not need your air packs. We're going to cover battery access techniques. Veteran firefighter and instructor Chris Soda and his team are simulating EV battery fires. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Training for the next frontier in firefighting. You're training while you're learning how these fires behave. How much of a challenge is that? It, it's huge because we don't have the science behind it to tell us exactly what's going on and the best way to combat these fires. How much water do you need to fight an EV fire? Potentially 10 times the amount of water compared to an internal combustion engine vehicle fire. Where we're using 300 to 500 gallons of water, we may use 3,000 to 5,000 gallons of water now. The Berkeley Fire Department says it's responded to six recent fires involving unattended lithium ion batteries. Fires involving all kinds of lithium ion batteries are on the rise. In San Francisco, battery fires more than doubled in the last four years. And in New York, it's increased seven times. Combined, those fires killed 11 and injured 269. Lithium ion batteries power everything from cell phones to electric bikes and vehicles. When they combust, these batteries can create unpredictable and potentially catastrophic fires. When a car crashed into this garage, the fire reignited several times, even after firefighters thought they put it out. This car fire reignited at a tow yard seven hours after it started, and again five days later, a phenomenon known as thermal runaway. When you have a thermal runaway in a battery, it gets extremely hot. It breaks down the chemicals inside and can make flammable gases. If that gas doesn't ignite, as soon as it comes out of the battery, it can build up and start to develop an explosion. And that's called off-gassing. You could see it in Erie, Colorado. Firefighters didn't know gases from a burning plug-in hybrid battery were building pressure inside this garage. Wow. That is scary. And they had no idea that that could happen. Because this is different. The explosion blew the garage doors off its tracks, narrowly missing one firefighter's head. Three others inside were knocked off their feet. There's kind of a two-pronged hazard. There's your, there's your fire hazard, which can be sort of rapidly developing in the case of e-bikes, and there's this potential for an explosion hazard. Before you came here today, how many of you had gotten EV fire training, like hands-on training? We discovered not all firefighters are getting the proper training. We surveyed two dozen of the largest fire departments nationwide. Only about 38% have had hands-on training to fight lithium-ion battery fires. The survey also revealed a lack of standards and methods to fight these fires. One fire department responded by saying, most of the equipment used for these incidents is not fully vetted, and we're still working to identify the best options. The technology is outpacing the safety standards and the regulations that will help them do their jobs. I think that's a fair statement. Yes, we are learning every day. The U.S. Fire Administration is the lead federal agency responsible for fire education, research, and training firefighters. Should there be federal regulations for fire protection and fire safety when it comes to electric vehicles? Right now, we're not even sure what to regulate because we don't know enough about the incidents that are happening. So we went to someone who should know, an automaker. Hey, Joe, nice to meet you. We met up with Joe McLean. He's a safety engineer at General Motors. So every electric vehicle that GM produces, manufactures, goes through crash testing here? Every vehicle, whether every it's electrified vehicle. or not, you know, goes through a set of regulated and mandated testing requirements in facilities just like this. And GM is using what they're learning in testing to train first responders. How much training have you done so far? Over the past year, we've done over 25 different locations, again, hands-on training 
We've reached and trained over 5,000 first responders. It's a start, but that's just a fraction of the more than 1 million U.S. firefighters. Another challenge? All EVs aren't the same, and batteries aren't always in the same place. So firefighters have to rely on emergency response guides, or ERGs, manuals from each individual manufacturer that help them figure out what to do when they respond to an electric vehicle fire. There are currently about 300 separate emergency guides. You're developing something that would make it easier, at least for GM vehicles, for first responders in the field. We've got a concept. We've got an app that we've worked with our immersive technologies team here at General Motors. There is a third party app already available to first responders that aggregates all of those guides in one place. These are different animal, require different tactics, different strategies, so we have to be able to identify it appropriately. That's why standardized, hands on training is so important. But for now, firefighters will have to seek that out themselves. The cars are out here today, and we don't have time to wait on that technology to kind of catch up to ensure that we can operate safely. Experts say to minimize the risk of lithium ion battery fires, follow the manufacturer's instructions when charging. And if your electric vehicle has been in a crash or an accident, park it outside away from other cars and structures and make sure it's checked for safety by the manufacturer. Asha Qureshi, CBS News. We definitely have to rethink and, and learn different ways to deal with this technology. Not just the firefighters, yeah. but the drivers too. Exactly, yeah. exactly.